Hey everybody, this is uh, Dr. Harris with Harris Internal Medicine. I am joining you again for my video blog for vitiligo. And so if you guys didn't see the last video, I am just journaling um, my vitiligo healing. So I'm doing a healing journal and I'm also giving you information on vitiligo, autoimmune disorders, also on functional medicine, which I am currently um, being um, certified in um, as we speak. Actually, I'm doing a, I'm doing a CME, which is continuing medical education on um, in functional medicine um, today. So uh, today, I just you know want to talk to you guys about uh, vitiligo, the disease itself. But before we do that, I just kind of want to tell you what I've been doing. I'm still, of course, staying on my autoimmune protocol, which is almost like a detox diet on the, if you follow functional medicine or if you are a functional medicine physician or nurse practitioner or registered dietitian, um, then you would, I'm following the Renew plan for, for that. And I'm also um, continuing my supplementation. I am uh, deficient in uh, folic acid and I need a B complex and I need some magnesium and also um, vitamin D, of course, which is we'll talk about later, which is great for um, autoimmune disorders and inflammatory responses, um, immune um, inflammatory responses, especially secondary to high insulin levels. What well, I want to get too technical, but we'll talk about that. But, um, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing, and I've been doing my light treatments three times a week. I really haven't noticed much change on my face. I, My husband and I say, I don't know if that's new um, or not. It's kind of like a darker brown spot that wasn't there before. Most of the change has been on my, my uh, um, arms. You know, I have some, the in the, the muscular part of my arms, most likely, um, which, you know, makes sense and we'll you know because it's not that area so but just a few more dots on my arms that I've recognized so that's about it but we'll keep on doing this and you guys will see the progression as we go along so let's talk about vitiligo um, I don't know if you guys know about vitiligo or um, if you do or if you don't this would be just a review for you but if you don't know anything about vitiligo I'm kind of here to tell you about it so um, as you guys all know, I was diagnosed with vitiligo when I was 20 years old, and it started with a, a spot here on my arm, and the spot just went away, actually, and then it actually started to progress from my stomach and go upward, and so I really didn't have any more spots on my arm. It just started progressing on my stomach, so I kind of had a, like a honeymoon period where I thought, actually, everything was going away, and then everything still progressed. So... Uh, vitiligo, of course, is a skin disorder that um, where your immune system attacks your melanin cells. Your melanin cells are the skin cells that produce your skin color. So if you have, everybody has the same amount of melanin cells. I want you guys to know that. So everybody, um, unless you uh, have a disorder like albinoism or you you know don't have any melanin cells, everybody has melanin, the same amount of melanin cells. It's just how much melanin is concentrated or produced in that cell is related to your genetics. And so if you come from a genetic line of olive color skin, so you're kind of like a medium producer. If you're more redhead, you don't push, produce a lot of melanin. If you're darker, you produce more melanin. So it really doesn't matter that it's not like we have more melanin cells who are darker. We just have a higher concentration of melanin. Just get, get you know, to help you understand that. So what happens is your immune system actually attacks a melanin cell. There's a protein on the melanin cell that the immune system recognizes as foreign. And um, inflammation can cause this protein. There's a lot of different things that can cause this protein. But then the immune system just kind of says, oh, no, we have to get rid of it because it's foreign. And that's what the immune system does. It, you know, protects us things from things like bacteria and viruses and things that are not um, supposed to be in our body. But however, sometimes it, it kind of gets mixed up because there's what we call mimicry. So these foreign, um, these proteins can kind of mimic 
um, something and stick to your cells and um, cause your your immune system to kind of go crazy. So, uh, so that's what happens in a viagot. And the more it's, it is related to inflammation, is related to stress. Stress is related to inflammation. There's a lot of hormonal um, things that go on your body with autoimmune disorders, especially with vitiligo, that will cause more uh, uh, color loss. So the stress is a huge um, part of it. Your diet is a huge part of it. So there's a lot of problems that go in your gut that causes kind of low line inflammation in your gut that will produce you know, more inflammation and it produce more problems with uh, skin loss. And then if you don't get the uh, certain nutrients that you need to get on or be on, then um, are you not getting uh, specific or you need more nutrients or you're not getting enough of what you need, then you can also have loss of skin color and that inflammatory response can go on and not having enough of things that you need in order for everything to work correctly. And I, I am putting it really simply because you guys aren't, you know, I don't, even if you are a physician, then you can still understand. But if you're not a physician, then of course you wouldn't understand anymore. We're not going to do a lecture on, uh, a sci you know, scientific lecture on vitiligo. So autoimmune disorder, there's two types. There's one that where it just um, affects one part of your skin and it doesn't spread and it just kind of stays there. That's segmental. Um, usually, you know, it's related to a trauma or something that happened. And then there is non-segmental where it usually kind of affects not necessarily mirror-like, but you kind of, what you see on one side is what you see on the other side. So if you kind of see, it's not exactly the same, but you can kind of see where it start here. And then of course it start, you know, it affected here. And then it kind of, so you kind of see it on both sides. So you, it kind of happens on both sides. Um, yeah, you get, I took a light treatment today, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of pink. Um, and of course, you know, on my hands, you can kind of see that it happened on both sides, even on the same fingers it affected, if you can kind of see how it's, it's segmented that way. Um, so that is, I mean, not segmented, but it kind of happened that way. So that is non-segmental. Uh, and it just kind of spreads over time. So what I don't want you guys to believe is that vitiligo is not curable. Um, there's a lot of things that they say aren't curable that can be cured and can be healed and things like that. So when you get on there and you have a history of vitiligo or if you've been diagnosed with vitiligo and they say, oh, you can't cure it and it's not curable, it's just going to keep on going forever and there's nothing you can do about it, then they're just misinformed, unfortunately. So, uh, ooh, did I, I didn't mean to smack like that. I went back to my, like, high school days when I used to do that. Oh, my goodness. So, um... They say 1% of the population is affected, but I think more people are affected um, now just because we're starting to see a lot more autoimmune disorders. And um, I, I don't think that 1% number is actually correct anymore. So we're, I think just we're starting to see more in our population just because of how we eat. We eat that typical Western diet or we call that typical American diet um, that's high in a lot of processed foods and foods that aren't good for you and we're not getting what we need and causing inflammation and so on and so forth. And we'll, uh, we're going to continue to talk about that. And it's also associated with other autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Hashimoto's, uh, thyroiditis. Um, and I already said lupus, what else? Uh, Addison, which is, you know, your cortisol loss, um, type one diabetes, which is an autoimmune type of, not type two, but type one diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. So I actually have, um, Hashimoto's along with, um, the vitiligo. Hashimoto's, de vitiligo developed first and the Hashimoto's develop later. Um, so I have to now treat both um, to um, make sure that everything goes well. If I don't, if my thyroid um, is not treated, then the Hashimoto, I mean, the vitiligo doesn't go well at all. So, um, so that's the basic things for vitiligo. There's uh, not, you know, what vitiligo isn't is not that rash that you get on the summer. A lot of people say, oh yeah, I have vitiligo. And it's really a fungal rash. That's not vitiligo. That can be treated with medications. Um, so if you notice that you get lighter in the summer when you sweat, 
but you don't see it in the winter, that's actually a fungal um, rash. Um, Vitiligo is not al albinoism. Um, we actually do have melon cells. Um, what is it not? Oh, it's not contagious. So let your children know if your children see someone with vitiligo and that you're walking across the street. And, you know, just explain to them they're just lost color and it's not contagious. And so this is kind of a tool for you guys to help, you know, explain to other people what vitiligo is. So, um, and I think that's just about it. So uh, next week, I think what I'm going to do, I don't know, we'll talk about either functional medicine. I think we'll talk about diet. I think that's a good way way to um, what we should talk about next and because it's going to affect a lot of different things um, that we talk about so um, can't wait to see you guys next week and um, you will talk about my progress and we'll keep doing this um, until I am totally brown again so I will see you next week have a good day